instruments and equipment and offers private one-on-one instruction for guitar, bass, and piano. Mike's Music at 816 East Main Street in Carbondale or on Facebook, 618-529-3444. Monday morning. The time now is 10 a.m. You're listening to WDBX FM Carbondale. The show is Talk of the Town, and I'm your host, Amy Fox. I'm joined in studio this morning with Gary Metro from the Carbondale Lions Club. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Well, thanks a lot, Amy. It's a pleasure to be here and to talk about the Lions. And you guys are gearing up for your annual pancake days, and uh, it's hard to believe that it's already that time of year again. Yeah, actually we have two pancake days during the year, and this is the first for this year. It's our annual spring pancake day, uh, and it's two days. It's on Saturday and Sunday, and it's at the Town Square Pavilion in downtown Carbondale, real easy to find. And uh, Saturday's hours are 7 a.m., plenty early, till 1 p.m. Sunday's hours, we start a little later, 8 in the morning until 1 p.m., and someone who's never been out to the Pancake Days before, this is truly an experience. Yeah, we think so. <laughs> we have a very unusual pancake machine uh, on which we cook the pancakes, and uh, it's quite amazing. And we've got a closed-circuit television set up so that if you can't get out into the tent, which we discourage, you can look over the sideboards. But if you can't do that, you can stay inside where the pancakes are served, inside the pavilion, and the closed-circuit TV shows you how it happens. And um, you have a lot of volunteers, a lot of members um, of the Lions Club who make this event possible each and every year. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, it takes our entire membership, essentially, and uh, it's uh, three days of work because we have to set it all up on Friday. Uh, then we have to serve the pancakes on Saturday and Sunday. And then, doggone it, Sunday afternoon, we got to take the whole thing down. So there's a lot of work there. And how many pancakes do you typically make? I don't have a number of the number of pancakes we serve. I knew you'd ask something like that. <laughs> Sorry, the, I just had the, to ask. <laughs> the, the big thing that, that people should remember about pancake days for the lion is, for the lions, it's... Uh, they're good pancakes, and it's a good cause. All all the proceeds, all the profits after we pay our costs, it all gets donated back to nonprofits throughout the community. And we've got a whole list of things that we contribute to. If you if you'd like, I can give you some of them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Lions Club um, does a lot for um, the local community, um, so I think it's important to kind of highlight some of those organizations and groups that you give back to. Yeah, we. Uh, we give out a scholarship every year at uh, Carbondale Community High School, and that's uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, we'll be presenting that in a few weeks. Uh, we uh, we donate to the Lions of Illinois Foundation for Camp Lions, and that sends kids who have uh, difficulties uh, to a nice camp experience. Uh, we have a low vision program. Uh, we uh, we give to the Boys and Girls Club of Carbondale. Uh, we donate to Gumdrops. We donate to the Women's Center. Uh, we donate to Good Samaritan Ministries. Uh, we donate to the Carbondale Police Coats for Kids program. Also to the Newman Center. Uh, we put a bingo. We sponsor a bingo program at the VA hospital four times a year, and we contribute to the Veterans Golf Outing, which raises money for veterans' causes. So that's some of the stuff that we do. And the Pancake Days is one of your biggest fundraisers of the year. Oh, absolutely. It is our biggest fundraiser. And if we have successful Pancake Day in spring uh, and then again in fall, the more more we sell, the more we give away. So if if you want to help your community uh, and have a darn good pancake and, and sausage breakfast, come on down. 
and um, you're always looking to recruit new members for the Lions Club as well. You guys meet every Friday at the Carbondale Civic Center? Yeah, we have a meeting on uh, Friday noon at the Carbondale Civic Center, as you say, and uh, it's a lot of good fellowship. Um, that doesn't mean it's just men. We are men and women both. And, and the people that we look for for uh, Lions Club are people of good character. And uh, we periodically reach out to folks and ask them if they'd like to be a guest. And, and, and sometimes they, they wish to be a member. But, uh, yeah, we're looking for good people. So if you want to help your community, um, you can find me easily enough on the Carbonale Lions Club website. Just call me up or get in touch with any lion. We'll, we'll work it out. And how long have you been a member of the Lions Club? Well, I've been a member for 10 years, which isn't terrifically long. We've had people who have been members for more than 60 years. Uh, and we've, you know, some of the, the some of the most successful, um, terrific people in Carbondale have been members of the Lions Club over the years and still are. And what's the best part about being involved with this group? Well, I, it's a heck of a lot of fun, but but the best part is you, you think about our motto, and the motto is real simple, we serve, and, and that's exactly what we do. In addition to contributing money to the, those causes that I mentioned earlier and others that I don't have on my list, <laughs> uh, the, the lines have been a part of Carbondale for 98 years. We were chartered in 1921, uh, and we... Perhaps if you've ever driven through downtown Carbondale on one of our patriotic holidays, that would be Memorial Day and July 4th and Flag Day and Veterans Day, there's nearly a 100 flags that are put up uh, for those holidays, and, and we put them all up, and then we take them all down. They go up at sunrise, a little after sunrise, and they come down after sunset. Um, we uh, recycle glasses which help people around the world to see well for the first time in their life many times. Um, we provide uh, vision help for people who are disadvantaged economically. We've got a person in the club, Anita Hutton, who takes care of that and does a great job. And, well, we do a lot of different things. If you've ever looked at our fire hydrants around Carbondale, they're bright red, they're nicely painted. We paint those fire hydrants, uh, and, and we get paid for it, and that money also gets donated to uh, community causes. What we take in, we give back. Right, and the more you have to work with, the more projects you can take on in the local community. Exactly right. And if you are just joining us on WDBX this morning, we are talking about the upcoming Pancake Days put on by the Carbondale Lions Club. This is a longstanding tradition here in Carbondale and the surrounding communities, and that's going on Saturday, April 27th and Sunday, April 28th. And that's going to be located in Town Square Pavilion in downtown Carbondale. How much is it for the breakfast, Gary? Well, I need to look at my sheet, and it says uh, <laughs> it's 6 bucks for adults which is very reasonable when you consider what you get. And children under 12, it's only $3. So it's, uh, I, I, I think it's a real good value, and it's a real good meal. It's a great way to start your day off if you're having breakfast. And, you know, you, you reach out to the folks that maybe are early risers and then the people who like to sleep in a bit. So it's a win-win for everyone. Yes, it is. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of those people who eat later, they're folks that came straight from church. They're really well-dressed, and uh, it, it, we, we're, we're kind of dirty and, uh, and, and sweaty after working for hours, and I feel kind of bad, uh, you know, the way I look compared to them, but uh, it all works out somehow. And um, do people need to buy tickets in advance, or do they buy them at the the event on Saturday or Sunday? Well, they can buy them in advance. They're available from any lion. Um, and if you wish to buy them at the door, you can certainly do that, too. We'll have more than enough for anybody who wants to show up. Um, and, and it's a nice setting, too. It, um, the meal is served inside the pavilion, so you don't have to worry about rain. Even if it rains, as long as you get to the pavilion, you'll be dry, and you don't have to walk through mud at any place. Uh, you can take a sidewalk right in, and, and it's a real nice setting. And um, I have checked the 10-day forecast, and right now it looks beautiful Saturday and Sunday, perfect spring day. So it, Yes, we've all got our fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> we've had a lot of times when it has rained, even though the forecast was great. So uh, we'll, we'll see what nature provides on Saturday and Sunday, hoping for the best. And um, once again, important to mention that all of the proceeds raised 
from Pancake Days goes back to support the Lions Club and then in return supports local community organizations. Absolutely. So, like I said earlier, it's a good meal and a good cause. Um, you can feel good about yourself, and you'll have a nice full tummy, too. <laughs> and if someone isn't able to come out on Saturday or Sunday, but they would still like to help out and, and donate um, money, donate their time, how can they go about doing that? Well, uh, as you said earlier, we're, we're looking for new members. Uh, we have, uh, we've have we got a good membership right now, but we'd always like to add people. We're looking for people of good character so they can help out in that way, and, and that's much appreciated. If someone mi- w- wishes to make a contribution, well, we, we accept that, and if you, we have a couple of ways of doing it. You could donate to the club, which is not tax deductible, or you could donate to the Carbondale Lions Foundation, which is tax deductible. It's a nonprofit. And the foundation makes grants for things that are of a permanent nature, um, and, and always to nonprofit organizations. We help out with hurricane relief and other things as they come up. Great. Lots of good information. Gary, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Maybe I forgot to ask you about the Lions Club or about the Pancake Days breakfast coming up this weekend. Well, it's a heck of a lot of fun, too. Uh, the Lions, uh, we're, we're, you have to have a good sense of humor about yourself if you're going to be a Lion. And uh, we have a lot of fun at our meetings. Uh, we do a lot of work for community causes, but we enjoy ourselves. And if you, if you come to the Pancake Breakfast, I think you'll see that spirit of fun. We have a good time out in the pancake uh, cooking tent uh, where the pancake machine sits, and um, we get a lot of work done, too. Great. Lots of good information. A pleasure to have you in studio. Gary Metro with the Carbondale Lions Club. Pleasure was all mine. Thanks for having me. And uh, that... We're going to take a quick break, but before we do, want to make you aware of the WDBX Spring Pledge Drive going on now through May the 4th. If you'd like to donate, you can call 618-457-3691. We're going to take a short break and get you some announcements, and we'll be right back with our next interview. Good morning, this is Alicia with the City of Carbondale here to bring you this week's calendar of events. On Thursday, April 25th, 2019, beginning at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., the Science Cafe will take a voyage out from a little corner of the Cosmic Sea in search of the biggest monsters known. The event is called the Monsters in the Cosmic Sea, Black Hole Tales from the Edge of Space and Time. This event is free to the public. For more information, please call 618. 618- 529-5431. And on Friday, April 26, beginning at 6 p.m., the Neighborhood Co-op will be hosting Feed Your Neighbor 5K Run and Walk. The event will take place at the Carbondale Turley Park. For more information, please go to www.neighborhood.coop. And on Saturday, April 27, 2019, it's the 46th annual Great Cardboard Boat Regatta. The races begin at 1 p.m. Registration begins at 10 a.m. For more information, you can reach them on Facebook at Great Cardboard Boat Regatta. For information on these events and others, please visit our websites at wdbx.org or carbondaletourism.org or you can reach us by phone at 618-457-3228. Thank you and have a great week. Good Monday morning to you. The time now is 10.13 a.m. You are listening to WDBX FM Carbondale. The show is Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Amy Fox. I'm joined in studio with Dr. Nicole Davis and Hannah Smith, both from SIU. We're glad to have you in studio and happy to be talking about the first ever Carbondale Food and Fashion Week. Good morning, Amy. We're happy to be here and talking about the first ever Carbondale Food and Fashion Week, aren't we, Hannah? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) And first off, I have to ask you, how did you come up with this idea? Well, actually, oddly enough, it was a student idea. And um, as the the fable, I think, at this point goes, I was actually guest lecturing an advertising course. And there was a fashion design and merchandising student in the course who had come back from um, Nashville Food and – or Nashville Fashion Week, excuse me – and was very excited. And in the conversation, um, we just decided that we could do something similar in Carbondale and kind of morph it to fit a smaller community. And what can people expect this week? Everything kind of kicks off tomorrow evening. 
Absolutely. We, we kick off with the showing of Kinky Boots at Shryock Auditorium on campus. Doors open at 6.30, and the show starts at 7. We'll have some opening remarks and some welcomes. Uh, Wednesday evening is um, the Art and Food Crawl downtown, and a way for us to just get people downtown moving in and out of some restaurants, um, other locations that are hosting some artists for us. And we will have maps available throughout town and tomorrow night at the opening night for folks to see what we're actually doing on Wednesday night. Thursday night, we have the Senior Showcase Fashion Show on campus. It's part of the, um, actually part of the curriculum for the fashion design students. And on Friday, we're part of SIU Day and working with some high school students on um, professional dress types of things. And Saturday night is our big fundraiser gala at Garden Grove Event Center. So we have a, a pretty packed week. And I think it's important to point out that the students have really been the ones uh, making this event reality. Absolutely. Yeah, um, so I actually got to work with some of the branding elements um, for the Food and Fashion Week. It's been a really great experience for me. Um, I've done it through the Saluki Ad Club, which is just you get real world experience doing stuff like that. So I got to do coupons, posters, um, and I'm really excited to get to go to the events and see how it all turns out. Um, I'm definitely going to be there tomorrow night in my kinky boots, so... I'm pretty excited for that. I'm also going to be there Saturday. Um, they roped me into doing a little bit of modeling, so I'm excited for that. We'll see how it goes. But And there really seems like there's a lot for everyone to kind of experience and do and try out. It's not just one particular group. Um, you don't have to be a fashionista, per se, to participate. Uh, not at all, and you know what? I'm not a fashionista either. I try, but <laughs> fail miserably sometimes. So, um, but but we've had a lot of fun with this, and the students have been great. They um, with Saluki Ad Club, we've had some public relations students, um, event planning students out of hospitality and tourism and administration, and and they have done a fabulous job, kind of leading the way with a little bit of guidance from a couple faculty. It's it's been pretty phenomenal for them. And I think it's always great when you can um, work closely with the local community as well. Yes, and we've had a lot of community support from the get-go, from the city of Carbondale, from uh, Carbondale Chamber of Commerce, Main Street, and some other organizations. Uh, in fact, the Carbondale Women's Club stepped up to provide vintage fashion for mm -hmm. the Saturday evening gala. So um, all of our pieces have stories to tell, and we're going to tell those stories, and Hannah's going to be one of those stories. Every <laughs> night. <laughs> Lucky you! I can't wait. <laughs> And um, if people would like to participate, do they have to get tickets for all the events or just show up? Or Most of the events are free. Um, the movie showing tomorrow night is free and open to the public, and we hope to have a, a large um, gathering. And I think it's going to be a, a unique venue because typically you go into Shryock and you expect to see something on stage performed, mm -hmm. uh, and we're actually showing a movie. So, so it's going to be a unique experience, I think. Um, Wednesday night is is free unless you decide to spend money in the restaurant. So that's mm -hmm. really up to the, the folks that go downtown. Um, the only other event that costs is the gala, and it's a, a ticket price um, mm -hmm. because we are raising funds for a new scholarship on campus. And can you elaborate a little bit on that scholarship that we'll be fundraising for? Absolutely. We've actually started a new scholarship fund um, appropriately titled mm -hmm. Carbondale Food and Fashion Week. And it's through the SIU Foundation, and essentially all of the proceeds, um, well, from Saturday night really are going towards that scholarship fund. So we hope to raise a little bit of money, and that's specific for incoming students, so not current SIU students. We're hoping to draw new students into the university who are interested in um, the types of things that our students who've been working on the event mm -hmm. are interested in. So they'll um, specific to the advertising program, hospitality tourism program, and uh, fashion design. And um, when you started kind of the very beginning phases of this uh, event, uh, did you ever imagine it would kind of evolve into what it is? Uh, you know, we, <laughs> we purposely started small, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, in the first year um, to kind of test the waters and see what the community would mm -hmm. be interested in. Um, did we expect it to, to grow like it has? It has gone um, like wildfire on social media, thanks largely to the Saluki Ad Club. So we're happy to see that and happy to see that, that people are interested and they're talking about it. And it, it seems to be kind of part of the conversation right now. Um, we were happy to have this week proclaimed Carbondale Food and Fashion Week. Um, uh, Mayor Henry did that a couple weeks ago at City Council. So 
uh, we're happy that, that we have such um, excitement around it and hope to grow the event uh, in some new directions next year. And what do you hope the reaction is um, from people here in Carbondale who come out to maybe one of the events, if not all of them? Well, hopefully we'll see them at most of the events, but we really just want them to have some fun. And, and we're raising money for a scholarship through one of the events, but we're also trying to just introduce some unique programs on campus to the community. And Hannah, a student perspective, um, you know, you are, you know, getting close to graduating. So this is a real life experience for you. But being involved in the planning and then getting to see everything kind of come to life, what's that experience been like for you? Um, well, if I'm going to be completely honest, when I was first told that they were putting food into Fashion Week also, I was a little skeptical. Um, but now that I've seen kind of the way they're doing it, um, I'm I'm actually pretty excited myself. Uh, I don't know that I'll be able to go out Wednesday, but I hope that you know other students do and other students are encouraged to be, participate in this um, because I know even just what I've done behind the scenes has been really great, really rewarding. Um, I've met a lot of people doing it and uh, I think it's just a good opportunity for students to go out and meet each other um, and meet people from the community and get to know this community a little bit better. And um, if people would like to get a hold of tickets for um, the gala on Saturday, how can they go about doing that? They can purchase tickets at Cool Spoons here in Carbondale. They mm -hmm. still have some tickets available for purchase there. Um, or they can go online to the SIU Foundation's website and find a link to purchase tickets there as well. And what is the dress attire for that event? Well, we are <laughs> encouraging people to wear vintage or vintage-inspired um, attire to the event just to have a little bit extra fun. Um, not everybody will do that, however, <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're you know, a, a little dressy, formal. We wanted it to be um, kind of vintage formal, and, and that's a lot of what the... the pieces in the fashion show are so and the theme for all of these events is kind of celebrating the 150th anniversary um, not only at SIU but in Carbondale as a whole yes absolutely and we've tied that directly to the gala with the vintage fashion show and the Carbondale Women's Club uh, I'll be honest kind of dug through some closets for me <laughs> to find pieces uh, but we have women of all ages in that group and we have um, reproduction outfits from the 1860s huh and uh, some reproductions from the 1920s, and then we have um, actual outfits from the early 1900s all the way through the 1990s. So, so we have a lot of celebrating to do, I think, with the vintage fashion pieces. It, it's going to be cool. And for the annual fashion show, which is on Thursday at the Student Center Ballroom, um, is there a particular theme for that, or is that still 150 um, that actually is all done by the students in the fashion design merchandising program, and it's their senior showcase. Okay. So the seniors in the program, um, whatever their designs are for the year, and they'll be unveiled Thursday night for folks to see. Uh, I think there's five seniors uh, participating this year. And is there anything else that um, either one of you would like to mention? Um, it's hard to believe it's starting tomorrow. <laughs> it is hard to believe. Uh, time flies. We had our first planning meeting about this time last year. So we've been working kind of on and off mm -hmm. for an entire year for this. So I suspect that once we wrap this up on Saturday, on Monday, we'll kind of well, maybe Tuesday. <laughs> we'll take a couple <laughs> days off. Um, kind of start talking about what we, we want to do for next year and how we want to see it grow and change. Great. Um, and then where can people get more information about all of the events, like schedule and those types of things? Um, I would say probably Food and Fashion Week's uh, Facebook page or other social medias. Um, it's updated regularly. They put all the information on there. Um, so it's just a really good source to get everything in one place. Great. Lots of good information. Dr. Nicole Davis and Hannah Smith, both with uh, SIU. Pleasure to have you in studio this morning. Thanks, Amy. Thanks. And just a quick reminder, the WDBX Spring Pledge Drive is going on now through May the 4th. If you'd like to donate, you can call 618-457-3691. That does it for me this morning. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll be back to join you next week.
This hour of programming is brought to you in part by your membership contributions and by Arnie's Sandwiches, offering deli sandwiches, soups, and salads daily, including the Macho Man Marvel, Bosky Del Bomber, and a selection of gluten-free options. Catering with lunch boxes, sandwich trays, and party subs also available. Arnie's Sandwiches, open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at 2031 South Illinois Avenue for dine-in, carry-out, or delivery. 529-4300. You'll have a good morning when you tune in to Grandma's Jazz, Saturday morning from 10 till noon. Hi, I'm Gene Armstrong, host of Grandma's Jazz. Join me for lots of wonderful music and not too much talk. Remember, make it Grandma's Jazz, 10 a.m. Saturday on 91.1 FM and streaming live on WDBX.org. The stars were shining bright. Now the milkman's on his way. Support comes from Work Care, providing pre employment physicals, drug testing services, injury management, OSHA exams, wellness and prevention service. Learn more at workcarereadywell.com. <laughs> This government had an idea and parliament made it law Seems like it's illegal to fight for the union anymore And which side are you on, boys? Which side are Welcome you on? Welcome to Class Matters, an educational program examining the role played by social classes and the class... Div-